right, let's roll on to fight number two that is on the same card. It is also a world title fight in the co-feature. Uh, Murajan Akhmadaliev, or MJ Akhmadaliev, is making the latest defense of his unified championships. He is fighting a Filipino uh, fighter in this instance that we don't know a ton about in uh, Marlon Tapales. All right, you see fairly uh, decent odds. I mean, Akhmadaliev is only minus 500 to win. You see the KO prop. You see the decision prop. You see, again, in a 12-round unified title fight, that the over-under is nine and a half rounds. All right, Dan, thoughts on this as it's the co-feature Saturday night for the Matchroom Show in San Antonio? Well, Akhmadalia, as you mentioned, is a unified title holder. He is probably the most unknown, uh, least uh, thought about, talked about, uh, tweeted about unified title holder that I've seen maybe ever. Uh, It doesn't mean he's not really good, though. He is considered by most people as the second best guy in the division uh, in this weight class with the four major titles. He has two of them. Stephen Fulton has the other two. Fulton and him would have obviously been for supremacy in the division, but for Fulton, can't argue with what he's doing. He's moving on to fight uh, Naoya Inoue, the major Japanese superstar that will take place this summer in a very important and big fight. So here you have uh, uh, MJ Akhmadaliev, who has not been the most active fighter in the world. Um, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind in, in many respects. It's, it's not a lot of times where you'll see a unified champion fighting on an undercard, for example. So that's the spot he's in. Marlon Tapalis, who is his opponent, he is the mandatory challenger. He is a former Bantamweight t- title holder. He's a little bit older. He has won three fights in a row. Um, and and the thing about Akhmadaliev is he doesn't wow you. He's not spectacular. He just gets the job done. And he's also doesn't have a lot of uh, professional fights. He's only 11 and 0, but he's able to be where he is as a unified title holder for a while now because he had such a very significant and deep amateur background fighting uh, out of uh, for the amateur national team in Uzbekistan, which in amateur boxing over recent years has become somewhat of a powerhouse. They've produced a number of quality fighters. So he goes into this defense, and uh, you know you never want to say it's a, 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 an easy win or it's, it's uh, the other guy doesn't have a chance or anything like that. But I think the combination of Akhmadaliev's overall skills, uh, his freshness, uh, Tapalas having come up in weight, uh, a little bit older or a little more shop worn, let's say. Um, I like him to win the fight by a knockout. I, I think Tapalas can hang in there. So we, we talked about it in the last fight. I took the under, which I don't do a whole lot. The over under in this fight is nine and a half. I took uh, Akhmadalia by a knockout on the over. I think he gets to him late in the fight. If you take a look at Akhmadalia's record, some of the knockouts he's had in recent times, he does go deep into fights. He's been there, he's been in uh, in longer fights where he scored knockouts. One of the opponents that he knocked out was an opponent that uh, also defeated Tapalis. So, you know, it's not necessarily the, the way that it always works, the circular logic in boxing, but it's at least something to take a look at. Um, I just feel like this is a fight where you've got a, uh, in, like, let's, I'll say Akhmadali is like an A-minus fighter, and, and Tapalis is maybe like a B-minus fighter. And grading them out, you know, to me, the A-minus guy is going to win every time. Interesting, uh, again, that you are going knockout prop here. I think this will be a longer fight. I'm with you. And I'm going to disagree with the mighty one that I think this is a decision fight. I think it goes the route. And again, I have to say this, having not really seen Topolis fight, but I've heard you talk about him on our Big Fight Weekend podcast and talk about him here. He's, what, 33-1? and one. Like you always like to say, who's the 33 against? You can stack well, up you know, he's easy got competition. Opponents. I mean, it's he also hasn't fought for like a year. Uh, right. You know, he, he may not be old uh, chronologically because at 31, you're not like that old necessarily, you know, even if you're in a smaller weight class. But he's been in he's been around for quite a while and he's been in some tough fights. You know, he's got almost 40 fights. It's been a long career with some uh, some difficulties. He is a southpaw. I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. Um, MJ seen everybody. Um, but. You know, I think it'll be a long fight, but I think that that Akhmadaev is going to wear him out. Basically, he's just he's All got right. so much energy and so much ability to such a they, uh, as my British friends say, he's got an engine. He's got a good engine on. Him. <laughs> All right. And the race car fans say that, too. He's got a good engine. Uh, Let's get in. Let's lock it in on the picks. Again, Dan and I agree on the who. Akhmadaliev, the unified champion at 122 pounds. We disagree on the how. Dan says knockout. I say decision. Interesting. We both have the over prop. Obviously, by extension, if I have the decision, I'm taking the over as well. The nine and a half rounds might as well. And again, that is the co-feature fight. Matchroom Boxing, San Antonio, Texas, coming up Saturday night on the Matchroom card. And the interesting thing, as you made mention, if if Akhmadaliev wins... Whatever happens with Fulton and Inouye, the monster, 
that winner may be very interested in an undisputed fight at 122. That's what's looming out there. Again, different promoters, different broadcast outlets. Can they all come together? That's a different discussion for another day. But that's what's out there for Akhmadaliev if he continues to win. P- potential undisputed fight with one of those other guys. All right, very good on that fight. Reminder, if you're just finding us, we're here Fridays, 1 Eastern time. I see the live audience growing as we speak. Dan Rayfield, hit that like button if you just come in. We're going to get to some questions and answers as you see on the left side of the screen there uh we're coming to q a here live q a if you're live with us i realize some of you see us later on in the day you see us in pieces our guys uh with bet us do a fantastic job our guys and gals with uh cutting out the exact fight pick clips so if you're still seeing that in a clip form just be with us fridays at one eastern time if you want to interact live watch us later on on friday saturday as we still stay relevant through the weekend and again, the uh, the Ryan Garcia, Gervonta Davis fight coming up. You've also got Canelo Alvarez in action. So as fight season is coming, you'll want to be here one Eastern time on Fridays. 